Welcome to this brief Bible dive with beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and with me, Pastor Nick. We're in this series of brief Bible dives where we're summarizing books of the Bible so that you can get a quick understanding of what each of them mean and why those messages matter for our lives today. And today we're talking about the book of Ecclesiastes. Oscar Wilde once wrote, quote, In this world, there are only two tragedies. One is not getting what one wants, and the other is getting it. See, that's the part of the dilemma of this person or people who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. According to tradition, an older tradition, it was King Solomon who lived around 3,000 years ago who wrote this book of Ecclesiastes as well as, you know, parts of the book of Proverbs. Uh, but, you know, we don't know for sure if it was Solomon who wrote some or all of Ecclesiastes, but we do know that according to the Bible, if we're talking about Solomon, King Solomon was considered to be the wisest person ever to live. And yet, dis despite his great wisdom, he too found himself flailing about with all you know, looking for earthly answers that all failed him. He had everything that anybody could ever get in this world. I mean, he had this beautiful palace, he was filled with, he had tons of wealth, all sorts of food coming from trade routes around the world. He was really famous, well-respected. Um, actually, by the end of his life, and this is an interesting point, King Solomon had married um, something like 700 women. He had 300 concubines from all these different lands. Um, and actually, what? why do I bring that up? Uh, not to say, hey, look how great this is, but actually it's kind of evidence that he was struggling to be satisfied with life. And sadly, many of these wives all brought their own forms of worship, um, their own foreign gods, which tempted Solomon away from following the living God, the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, uh, and instead to start worshiping some of these foreign gods made out of stone and wood, silver, gold. Uh, because why? He wasn't satisfied. He didn't seem satisfied with only worshiping the living God. Yet at the end of his life, Solomon realized that everything he experienced, everything he had, everything he tried, it was all a disappointment. And quite frankly, it proved to be meaningless. So he was led to question whether life is pointless at all. He looked around, everything he saw, it just seemed meaningless to him, pointless. Um, because, you know, he had really loosened himself from the one true foundation, the one true living God of the universe. He had cut himself off from the one who is the source of all meaning and purpose and breath. And since he had cut himself off from all that gives breath and meaning and purpose, it makes sense that everything would appear like, well, why would we be here? Why would life exist? So if we read Ecclesiastes with this understanding of, of whomever the author is, maybe King Solomon, or somebody like him or somebody kind of explaining his life, the book can begin to make a little bit more sense and actually a little less depressing because Ecclesiastes can be a very depressing book. Do not read it when you're really kind of feeling down, seriously. Uh, the author writes that life is unfair, unfulfilling, and it makes no sense. But then a few verses later, the author says, well, you know, since life is meaning and meaningless and doesn't make sense, let's just enjoy it, work hard, and, you know, and then, but then also, oddly enough, seek after the living God. You know, what this book contains is actually then the honest struggles. I mean, it's almost an honest confession of a person who, who, if the world were to measure it, had absolutely everything you could possibly want. But really, a person who also discovered that the world's standards lead to despair, to depression, to pointlessness. Now, fortunately for the author, let's just say Solomon, fortunately for those who have this book, like, like we do, available to us, um, let's, you know, again, let's say it's Solomon. Let, fortunately, then Solomon worked through all of this struggle and was filled with hope at the end of his life. I mean, this journey involved recognizing uh, the comforting fact that God is in control of that whole cycle of life and death and rebirth. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about that fact. And he stated that in that somewhat famous um, line in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, which Actually, the whole chapter is somewhat famous, uh, but uh, 3 verse 1 says, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. 
Uh, maybe you remember the song that was sung by the uh, the birds in the 1960s. You know, for, for everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And daytime to every purpose under heaven. That whole thing. Uh, but, you know, the author also says that there is nothing new under the sun. Well, this could also seem kind of depressing. But the author found some, this to be pretty comforting. Because it's a reminder that if God is guiding these cycles of these seasons and cycles of life and death and rebirth, cycles that repeat and repeat and repeat. And on top of that, God is a God of mercy and love. Why would we, why would we be afraid? Why would it bother us? And so again, if the author is King Solomon, after living a long and, uh, you know, just fruitful life in terms of the fact that he had a lot of stuff, that kind of fruitful, uh, well, he concluded that we should focus on the simple things of life as we then also try to honor and seek after God. The author, possibly Solomon, concluded that true joy can be found not in having a bunch of stuff, but true joy can be found in simplicity. Rather than cluttered busyness, simplicity, as we honor and seek after the one true and living God. So that's the story uh, That's uh, of Ecclesiastes. That's Ecclesiastes in a nutshell. To learn more about our congregation, Beautiful Savior in Bloomfield Hills, our website is bslcmi.org. We'd love for you to share this video, like it, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, go love God and love your neighbors.